Hi, welcome to lecture 4 of Marketing Analytics. This video, we are going to look into product design, looking into new product development and how this can transform to consumer and customer insight. Now, we are going to start out by understanding what are the nine steps of the new product development and then we're going to analyze the importance of how consumer insights will contribute along to the nine steps of the NPD. So the nine steps include idea generation, screening, concept testing and development, marketing strategy development, business analysis, product development, test marketing, and finally commercialization. So in idea generation, we begin by understanding what are some of the uh, product ideas that we can search for over the hundreds and thousands of idea generations that will make up this new product. Sometimes the product ideas can come from internal idea sources, like the company finds new ideas internally from their own uh, internal employees and the R&D and the employees will then contribute to these ideas. Or the ideas can also come from external idea sources. Like for example, the company finds new ideas externally from the distributors or suppliers who tell them that this is what the consumer wants and then they take into effect in consideration. And also from their competitors, maybe they can improve on the competitors' ideas. And these important ideas mostly come from the customers because new product development process must always focus on creating value for the consumer. Then from these ideas, we start to screen the ideas to find out which are the ideas are the most important and the better ones. So filtering these ideas to pick the good ones is to help us to spot what are ideas that can potentially be developed and what ideas that should drop as soon as possible. Reducing this number of ideas will then help us to uh, budget our development for these ideas into actual products. So those that have been uh, ideas that have been uh, downsized, we will uh, sorry we, that that has been uh, selected. We will then further develop those ideas into profitable products. Then then dropping all these bad ideas makes us. Uh, stay within our budget for our marketing product development. The next we want to do is to, once we decided on what ideas we want to generate and develop, this is where we then uh, test our concepts. Now, in testing concepts, we make sure that the attractive ideas are further developed into pro, uh, product concepts. So a product concept is kind of like a detailed version of the new product idea that we want to state in meaningful terms for the consumers. So just to give you an idea uh, what a product idea is, is a, pro is a possible idea for a product. Now it could be in a form of a solution that meets a need that the consumer has and the concept could be a detailed version of the idea stated in a meaningful consumer terms. And then we can also mock up the idea into in an image for the consumers to look at so that the consumers can perceive the actual or potential product. So let's give an example like an electric car. So if the marketer's task were to develop the product into an alternative product concepts, then the company will find how attractive the concept is to the consumer that they want to buy an electric car because it helps them save energy and also protect the environment. Now, the possible product concepts for this electric car could be the first concept, it can be an affordable mid-sized car designed as a second family car to be used around town for visiting and friends and doing shopping. Or it could be another concept, maybe a mid price sporty compact appealing to young singles and couples or even more affluent ones. And we can also think about developing another concept, which is a high end mid size utility vehicle that appeals to those who want space for SUVs <coughs> provide, uh, but also want an economical car. 
So as you can see, <coughs> these concepts need to be quite precise in order to be meaningful. Now, once we have developed different, different concepts for an electrical car, we then test these concepts on our consumers to find out which of the concepts that are most attractive and clear. So in the concept testing, we want to make sure that we test the concepts with the right type of target consumers. So the concepts can be represented to consumers either symbolically or in a mock-up physical car that actually helps the uh, users to uh, uh, visualize how the car would look like. Now, these concept tests could be in terms of words or it could be pictures or descriptions that is just sufficient enough. That means we don't even have to prototype it. To increase the reliability of these tests, a more concrete physical representation may be needed and that's where we prototype the uh, concept even further. And then they be asked questions in order to find out what is the appeal like of that concept to the consumers. Once we have decided on which concept that we want to further develop, that's when we make the marketing strategy development on that concept. Now, the initial marketing strategy for the new product must be based on the concept that we have uh, nailed down and introduce this product to the market. So we don't actually have to create the product first. We just have to make sure that the concept is strong enough to appeal to the mass market. Now this marketing strategy statement consists of three parts. Formally, we must make sure that there's good description of who are we trying to target in terms of the product and the planned value proposition as in why should the target buy this product the sales and of course the market share and profit goals for the first few years. And then nextly, we want to also see an outline of the product's planned price, pricing, distribution and marketing budget for the first year so that people understand the value of this product moving forward. And finally is the long term sales figure profit goals and marketing mix strategy so that the investors of this concept of new product development will feel confident that this product will have a good, solid, profitable run. Now, moving on, we have to figure out the business analysis. Evaluate what is the attractiveness of this business of the new proposed product, not just about the target market, but what is the after effects of the concept? What is the next stage that potentially could affect the product? Maybe a new line of the new product or maybe a new variant of the new product? Review what is the sales, the cost, the profit and projections of this new product to find out if these factors will satisfy the company's main objectives. And then, in order to estimate the sales, the company must look at the sales history of similar products and conduct a very thorough market survey. Sometimes, looking at competitors' sales could also be a good factor for you to understand if the product concept will be successful. Now, when the sales product is a uh, sales forecast is prepared then your firm can then estimate what is the expected cost and profits of the product in terms of the marketing, the R&D, operations, as well as the manufacturing of the product. These sales figures can eventually be used to analyze the new product financial attractiveness. Now remember, all this needs to be done before you even manufacture the product. So you need to do a very good thorough projection and regression of how well the product will do. If everything is favorable in terms of the numbers and figures, then we can go on to ideation of the product into development. The concepts then pass the business test and then you develop the concept into an actual product that will be workable to meet the market offering. Now, this problem, of course, is that at this stage, R&D and engineering costs will jump high in terms of investment. 
one way to keep the cost down is to probably prototype maybe just a small sample of the product and then push it out into the market to see whether it works in terms of favorable appeal or not. So when the R&D develops the concept, they develop the product in a successful prototype, varying in terms of timing and also prototype methods. When the product undergoes the test, make sure that safety is important, especially if you're doing a product like a car or even uh, products where it is uh, digestible into the system. All these patents, these uh, certification of fitness, as well as the uh, relevant authoritative um, uh, 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 pass-through uh, of, 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 uh, of um, certifications must pass, must pass along. So for example, like if you're creating a new uh, digestible product, uh, in Malaysia, we must make sure that it passes the food uh, authority as well as the halal certification. Now, in many cases, the marketers will then involve the actual customers to try out the product in terms of the testing and the consumers can evaluate the prototypes and also give feedback on these pre-release products. The experiences may be very useful, especially when you full-fledged put the product into the development stage. Now, then we have to test the market to see what is the appeal of the product. Testing the market in a realistic market settings when the risks are high or when the firm is not sure that the product is of a marketing program, especially with high cost products like cars or even um, uh, luxury items. Yeah. Now, the marketeer's experience come into play here before the marketing product. So they will have to really have a good knowledge of the targeting and positioning and strategy, advertising, distribution and packaging. The test place must be taken into consideration. Geographically, where should they start testing the market? How is the duration of the testing? What information or feedback is needed to, to, to help to further the product development and the mode of action that comes into it after the feedback is in? We also want to think about whether do we want this to be a controlled test where people are, uh, we are going to compare with uh, uh, the sales in a controlled environment and a non-controlled environment, or do we want to, it to be a simulated test whereby we get people in into a store and ask them what they think about the product. Now, if the product is successful in terms of its test marketing, now we can push it out into commercialization. Introducing a new product into the market, this is where the cost will again be elevated and high, more, high cost will be incurred. The company may need to build and rent a manufacturing facility if you don't have one, and the large amounts need to be spent on advertising, promotion, and the marketing efforts in the first year. Consider these factors before the product is commercialized. Number one, what is the timing? Is it a good time to put out a new product into the market? Or is it a bad timing where a, where a country is facing recession and you know that the people in the country will not be able to buy items which are luxurious and of high-end quality? Number two, think about what is the place. Consider the pilot of the market and then roll it out over time to other geographical uh, places as well. And thirdly, focus on creating superior customer value, not just focusing on the selling of the product, but also on helping the customer feel confident about the product. Now, when we understand the stages of the NPD, we now can look at what are the product features that the consumers tell you that they like about the product and position the product in such a way whereby the consumers will feel much more connected to the product as well as uh, increase the probability of the consumer buying the product. 
This is where we need to think about targeting and positioning. Discover what are the most favorable segments that we want the product to be launched into and what are the characteristics of the product that are important to them. This is where we think about the targeting. And then if we know all these, then we can position the product in terms of their desirable features using the correspondence analysis to maximize the segment's favor towards it using what we call a term multidimensional scaling. So what are some of the key takeaways of this lecture? New product development is a nine step cyclical procedure that allows for active engagement of stakeholders to be involved in the process, especially the customers and the investors. Now, if we can use marketing analytics techniques to ensure the product developed in the NPD will gain favorable response, then we can target the right products and also, uh, sorry, target the products to the right customer and position the right attributes for the customer's uh, uh, favor. So, for this particular lecture, I would like you to please look into understanding how to do decision tree analysis to target uh, consumers using decision tree with the technical video as well as the uh, data set given and also learn how to do multi-dimensional scaling using positioning and with the technical uh, video as well as the data set given so that you can see how this can work in an actual marketing analytics setting. As an additional reading, please read through these two articles on decision tree analysis to improve email marketing, as well as brand positioning using multi-dimensional scaling techniques uh, in the herbal healthcare brand Indian market. Now, after reading these two articles, explain if decision tree technique is feasible to apply to the healthcare brands in the Indian market to consolidate more knowledge. And ask yourself, how can this work? Which means I'm asking you, if you were to combine the two techniques together, what are the new knowledge that you can gather out from this uh, two techniques in the data set that has been given? This ends the lecture for this particular uh, topic. The next lecture, we're going to focus on price and promotion. We're going to revisit the concept of price elasticity and pricing research, promotion evaluation and market response modeling. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lecture.